Everyone, I'm Marita Shelby, also known as Jazzy Rita. And this is one of those days when you wake up and you're like, I just love what I do. I just can't wait to get to work today. Because today, ladies and gentlemen, we have the great pleasure of speaking with the one and only multi-talented, multi-faceted Christian King. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So congratulations, you know, we are EURweb.com and uh, we launched into cyberspace as an extension to our flagship program, Radio Scope, the entertainment magazine of the air. So we know stars when we see them and we've broken a few and you are definitely a bright and shiny star. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you, thank you very much. Great. So now let's talk about Mr. Keys. I'm sure you are no stranger to audiences at EURweb.com. Uh, we fell in love with you almost 20 years ago as we got to see you on stage and then on videos in the Medea plays. And you've evolved from stage to TV and film and now music and writing. So just give me an overview. What's this journey been like for you? Um, this journey has been amazing. Um, you learn a lot. Uh, clearly, new experiences provide opportunities to continue learning. And I, I value myself as a lifetime student. Um, you know, you always want to create space to continue to grow. And it seems like over my career, you know, from the stage plays to TV and film to writing, you know, the more you study the more opportunity you you know you have to be prepared for upcoming blessings and that's the way it's worked you know thankfully um you know theater was amazing you know i'll still do theater i love getting on stage the immediate uh interaction and response but i also love doing tv and film so um did a bunch of plays probably for about eight or ten years um, some amazing plays, some amazing productions, and working with some amazing people. And now in the TV and film space, you know, the, the blessing of, you know, occasionally being on three or four or five shows at the same time um, and not complaining because, you know, you ask for this, you pray for this. So, you know, I, I won't take it for granted. I, I'm not going to whine about it. I, I asked for my plate to be full. So now that it's full, you know, I'm going to eat. We gonna eat. Yes, so, yes. Yeah, your performances so, are delicious, okay? Just so we're just- Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Um, so I'm just excited. I'm just, at the end of the day, I, I just love creating and I, I love the space to where I can set my personality down, grab a hold of this character or, um, you know, create this character off the page and get it up walking around and breathing and living and and it's a blessing it's a privilege so i treat it as such but it is refreshing to see a uh, talent as dynamic as yours and i'm going to ask the standard question so i mean you like know, that's a cliche question but you know we all get asked it in our careers uh now that you are truly just living this multifaceted life who were some of the performers that inspired you along your journey oh my goodness um who inspired me? Well, musically, that's easy. Uh, Prince, Mike, Luther, Whitney, Stevie, you know, people in that space. Um, and we'll, we'll, I'm, I'm sure we're gonna circle back to music. Uh, as an actor and as a writer, um, man, Sidney Poitier, Gregory Hines, you know, Mr. Denzel Washington, you know, and I study any actor who moves me. So if it's Anthony Hopkins, uh, Christopher Waltz, or Meryl Streep, again to, you know, Mr. Sidney Poitier and, and Viola Davis and Angela Bassett and and people that just bring truth and magic uh, to that particular moment. You know, you can take a smaller role and look at it that way, if you want to, I don't. I try to treat everything like it's Avatar. Like it's the biggest, like it's a Marvel thing and it's the biggest thing in the world because when you treat it with that respect, that level of preparation and professionalism and respect, 
it shows and you know people enjoy working with you you know you show up kick butt and go home it's no drama it's no nonsense it's just hey call christian again some of these shows you know the blessing of it'll be you know the role will start off small or smaller you know a few episodes um and then you know without getting into detail because we want to stay in compliance with the strike that's currently going on with sag um thankfully we wrapped up the wga but occasionally you'll get there and they'll pull you aside and say hey you know can but like we want to write more for your character you know do you mind hell no man oh let's go <laughs> right more well, money more money more money hey. yeah, well yeah and and more opportunity to work with this amazing cast you know you fit in seamlessly somewhere you want to stay working there you know you you what's that saying uh you'll love it over here you start to love it over there so when they ask that it's just a reflection of the work that you've done your professionalism and and who you are and the fact that people want to continue to work with you so it's a blessing so i just try to approach everything even if it's a, a one or two episode and, and the character's supposed to be written off i want to do my job i want to do a great job be a great teammate and that ends up you know avalanching into more blessings so i love that i love that part of my my job well, we love it keep them coming and yes uh, we are union strong over here. We stand yeah. in solidarity and congratulations to the writers, prayers up for the actors and all others who are facing uh, labor issues right now. So we can't go into specifics, I know, but on one of them shows, you we saw your backside. I was like, ooh, okay, man. I won't say which one it was. I cannot say. The court will not allow me to say which one it was, but I was like, ooh. Glad your mama named you Christian because I'm saying. Listen, oh, no, like, so, no, so, and that's the <laughs> that's the other side of that's the other side of acting. It's uh, again, remember when I say when you're in that space, you know, where you can trust your teammates and you're just creating great stuff. Um, it that's a huge part of it. Um, you know, you work with as an actor, you may work with some stunning and beautiful actresses. Um, the way to create that space and that trust, you know, because some of them, most of them are married, you know, um, you, you, you create that trust and you keep it. So that way they know once you're, you're filming, it's just acting, it's just professionalism. I, you know what, if I know anything, I can count on Christian to, you know, to, to be there, be present, be trustworthy, not to violate that trust. And that's where, once that trust is built with these actresses and with your teammates, um, that's where you can create some really great stuff, and that's what we end up doing. We'll talk, you know, talk the love scenes through, um, you know, ask comf comfort levels, you know. Um, each one is different, but essentially the recipe is foundationally the same. It's, you know, hey, what, what are you comfortable with? Okay, here's my comfortabilities. Um, I don't want to get you in trouble at home. You know, how far are we going to take this? And, you know, if it's on a network, like OWN, OWN is only going to show so much. Um, or if it's uh, streaming, then they show a little more, on, you know, on <laughs> yeah. streaming. So, you know, so you could do a little more. So at, at the end of the day, if I'm, you know, if I'm playing a husband and I'm coming home to my wife and I haven't seen her in a week, so I've been out of town, you know, working my government job or whatever the character is, um, facts are whatever their truths are, and when he gets home, he wants to he wants to have some some private time with the wife. Yeah. So you know, it's yeah. we make it we make it as real as possible, within reason. You know, realistically <laughs> looking intentionally and emotionally true, and then we then we just have fun with it at the end of the day. And then when he uh, cut, you know, we get dressed, we high five, like oh yeah, we we did that, <laughs> and then we get out of there. Yeah, and the audience at home is like, <laughs> "Oh, trust me, trust me." <laughs> that again. They let, they let okay. me know about it on social. They let okay. me know about it. Okay, I throw myself at the mercy of the court. It's time yeah. for play to music right now. Let's 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 talk about the music. So, okay, how can I approach this? So, you know, we were all kind of uh, freshly gravitating into a 
post-COVID world or as close yes. as, as possible. So a lot of stress factors, you know, all over the world. Uh, everybody is just, just reassembling into who they are and what they're doing. And so um, the union, we can go on strike until I think the beginning of the second quarter. Yeah. Out of the midst of this, here is this, this amazing actor who we've loved as an actor and he, you know, puts the music out. I mean, everybody that say they can sing, ain't. You know, everybody that say they want to be like a music star, ain't. And here you come with Under That Bed. So, you know, and I've, I I must confess, Scout's Honor, I've just recently become an Instagram scroller. It's just my, it's my pleasure thing to do at the end of the night, just because I know it's happy stuff. And I'm, it's like, okay. And now I'm hearing you on the radio and seeing that you're performing around the country. So just explain how did you make that um, that entree or that segue so successfully? Because you are truly represented. Like you are no slacker in the music world. Thank you very much. Um, I've I've been writing songs since I was 12. You know I, I've been in love with music for a long time. You know we all have. Um, and thankfully, musically, I was raised by some great people. So they, you know, they taught me how a song should feel, how a musical experience that's honest should feel. You know, you're 12 years old, 10, 11, 12, hearing, you know, Stevie Luther, Mike Prince talk about these things. It's like, man, I want to feel like that or I want to experience that or I, what's love like, you know, when it's like that? And they, you learn that music can transport you into an experience or into a place or space that you've never been, or maybe one that you don't want to go to, that you don't want to experience. But either way, it taught me that. So I've always written, I probably write a song a week, you know, and right after the pandemic, I started demoing songs for other artists and I didn't have a track record. I wasn't recognized resume wise as somebody who, you know, was a strong writer um, musically, because I had never really pushed any music out there and, and really stood on it. And these great songs just started accumulating. I'm like, man. And God kept nudging me like, hey, well, if they don't take it, put it out. And then I had, you know, a couple icons in the business. I sent them some stuff and they were like, man, listen, if those guys don't take this, man, you need to put it out. This is good stuff. This is, this is good stuff. And then I was having a conversation with my brother too, and I, you know, I told him, it's like I'm thinking about putting the album out, man. I don't wanna, I don't wanna die in 40 years um, with 500 or 600 songs on my phone. You know what I mean? It's just, you know, I think it was Thoreau that said that the, the one of the richest, richest, wealthiest places in the world is cemetery or the graveyard because people die with their passions, they die with their dreams, they, they, we're afraid to chase them. So we end up holding on to them and carrying and get buried with them. And I don't want that. So, you know, I want to, I want to, when he comes and gets me in 2060, 2070, I want to be on E. I want to have lived and put some stuff out that people can connect with and that resonates with them. And so we finished the album. Um, originally, Get Involved was going to be the first single, but. We finished everything up around March, so that's the start of wedding season. And, you know, I was thinking, well, man, let's go ahead and give them the wedding song. Let's give them Under That Veil, you know? And uh, and that song, it, most of the songs on the album, I, I wrote all of them. Um, most of them came from a moment or there's a story behind them. And Under That Veil was simply, you know, my oldest brother, who's one of my heroes. Um, he asked me, you know, about dating and what's that like, you know, being, an actor and, and being, you know, somewhat known. And I was like, man, I'm dating on purpose right now, man. If, you know, if I can't see her being under that veil, then, you know, we can't, we, we not dating. But the way my mind works, as soon as I said that, a piece of my mind was like, hey, that's a song. <laughs> so I wrote the song and it, it was just about manifesting what you want, you know, speaking it into existence. I've never been married. so. Um, you know, that hope is still alive in me that, I, that I'll get to raise that veil. I, TV and film, I've been married like six times, but in real life, okay. I've never been married. So it was just me declaring what I want. And I, I find that again, 
If you make it honest, it'll connect with people, and people are loving it, man. It, it's it's um, it's still thriving. And on the album, we did an acoustic version of Under That Veil called the Red Wine Mix, where it's just a couple guitars, live bass, and like a djembe, like a, a small metallic um, box, which is kind of a drum, but it's a really stripped down version of the song as well, and people are really digging that as well. But well, it is so refreshing because I, okay, and uh, a side note to the EUR web audience, I know somebody like, she just teasing, she's just, yes, I am. I'm just teasing, I'm grinning, letting little Chester a cat, yes, I am. Okay, back to our show. It's um, so refreshing. And because I'm a teenager, I'm, I'm between old school and, and new school. And all artists have their divine right to express themselves however they so choose. But mm-hmm. I, I, I appreciate that uh, with your music, you know, the sense of romance is not lost. Uh, mm-hmm. We live in an age now where any and everything goes, anything, mm-hmm. everything, anything, everything, this it goes. So to to at least to put the idea of of romanticism and lifetime commitment. To, if, if, if only but for a song, I just want to say thank you. So now, thank tell me about the collaboration with New Breed Entertainment. Is that your company that you started, or are there other producers and musicians that you work with? Oh, no. New Breed is actually the, that's the production company that I hired to shoot my music videos. Um, it's a great director over there, Corey Grant. I worked with him back on a film a long time ago that I almost got in trouble for saying. Um, uh, cause we're on strike, but I, huh? <laughs> you didn't yeah. say it. <laughs> I, I, we worked on a film a while back. Um, and I know he's a great director. I knew he would get the vision that I had for these videos. So, um, he did the video for So Sweet, which just released and it's So Sweet is on the radio right now. Um, he shot the video for Cook My Dinner Naked. He shot the one for Gonna Love You, Just What I Prayed For, Get Involved, um, Under That Veil, The Red Wine Mix. It's beautiful and it's black and white. It's, it looks like a 1920s movie. It's beautiful. Um, he just did a great job. So um, it was great to partner with them on this because I knew they could execute the vision that I had for the videos and tell the story that I wanted to tell around each song. Okay, now Christian. A man named Christian, mm-hmm. thinking like you, wrote a song called Cook My Dinner Naked. What were you thinking? I was in so Applebee's. Have people say, oh Lord, oh help me Lord, oh Jesus, talk, talk, cook my dinner naked. Now come on, what? <clears throat> were your prayers um, made or what? Let me see. Um, I was in the Applebee's, they had blues on. Um, I was in, I don't know what city or state I was in, I was there working and there was an Applebee's close. So I was like, okay, I can get some grilled chicken and you know, something halfway, you know, healthy. They had a blues song on, I'm like, man. And I grew up on blues, you know, Holland Wolf, BB King, Muddy Waters, you name it. And I grew up on everything, but blues was definitely part of it. And I'm like, man, I need to write a blues song. I should, you know, I want to write one. It's literally, so I'm sitting there, I asked the waitress for a pen and I, I wrote the chorus for Cook My Dinner Naked on a napkin in an Applebee's, probably in the South. I feel like I was in Atlanta or somewhere in the South down there working and filming. But yeah, I just was like, okay, it's gotta be honest. It's gotta be something I would say, even if it's a little sexy, we gonna keep it classy. So the wildest thing in the song is Cook My Dinner Naked and give me dessert when I'm done. Now, we know what we think that means. And I could have said that a hundred different ways, but I also want to leave a little bit to the imagination. What does that mean to you and your person? You know, when, when it's when it's grown time, when it's sexy time, I want to leave enough details out of it so you can fill in the rest and it can have its own meaning to you. You know, um, and, that, and that's all. I just wanted something that I wouldn't get tired of singing two, three hundred times later, four hundred times later, you know, when you're touring and performing, I, I hear the song and I forget it's me, which uh-huh. means I feel like I, 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 get, I did it right, which, which I did it right. 
You did. Okay, I want to ask you something. That's X. I want to ask mm-hmm. you something about that song. So, is it cooked as in the naked? Is it in the before body or the after body? Or you just envision the body that's after life or suction or just anybody naked? It's, it's Don't your let person. me get you in trouble with that answer. I'm just trying. No, no, you you won't. You won't. Um, it's it's your person. And, and you know, honestly, I mean, you're thinking logistically, you're not. Please don't like fried chicken or fry nothing naked because you know grease be popping on stuff and you don't want no the repercussions of that but it, essentially it's just you know it's just a it's just a, a fantasy moment for you and your person if if you know you're on the way home or you know you are leaving the office in an hour and you call you know your your dude at home like hey you know fix me something to eat and i want dessert when we when i'm done um that's a i want to get those calls i would like to get that you know call i'm single right now but um those are some great calls i gotta imagine for for somebody in love yeah. uh and in a healthy relationship to get hey i'll be home in an hour and a half um you mind fixing me something to eat and i'm gonna need that dessert when i'm done i like that it's fun it's playful it's honest it's sexy it's a little clever um and we don't need to spell out everything sexually for everybody. People are smart enough to get the references. You know, grown folk can, can understand exactly what I'm trying to say without me having to say too much. So, I, I think it's I think it's just fun. It's just fun, and the, and the music video was amazing as well. Yeah, and it, it is. And it's, so, a couple things about the videos. Um, I remember when I first saw Under That Veil, and I was delighted to see someone that looked like me. Uh, yes. you know, I've been in Hollywood for a minute. You know where I'm going with this. And I honor and appreciate all the many spectrums of beauty that we're blessed to see and hold and experience. But many times in TV, movies, and in music videos, we are limited to one type of beauty or one shade of beauty. So I'm dancing all around this. But in your comments on YouTube, the chocolate girls are definitely representing it saying thank you. And I want to throw that thank you in. We love the vanilla and the caramel and the cafe au lait as well. But um, what I'm sensing from you and what you're saying and doing uh, is uh, a value system. Yeah. You center. And you're not just, hey, I'm good looking, I'm talented. Let me just go and exploit that by any means necessary. Uh, but you seem beholden to some core values, and yeah. you talk about where they come from. Well, and then I'll address the the video thing first. Um, and even if I'm writing TV shows or films, I try to make sure that that amazing melanated spectrum is covered. You know, and not just on the beige end, but I, I want people to be able to be like, man, that. That could be me. That's she's my complexion, and look at where her skin is. It looked like satin or silk, and she's glowing and beautiful and chocolate and this, that, and the other. Like you, you know, I, I don't discriminate. I, I would date somebody extra double chocolate, and I would date somebody, you know, beige. I, I love us, but if I'm on the creative side of it, I do want to make sure there's representation. I want to make sure that that. You know, black women see people that look like them, that they're reminded of how beautiful and strong, strong and clever and and brilliant and tenacious they are. And one of the ways I can do that is try to make sure that that representation is shown wonderfully and beautifully in the things that I create. So that's that's one of the things I, I stand on, whether it's my music and my music videos or if it's TV and film and this project that I'm writing, I'm gonna make sure that we have some representation in there and some inclusion because it's necessary, you know, and and, and it's important to me. Well, I'm just gonna answer it non-verbally because I'm not sure what projects and stuff we can mention out loud, but I will say forever, okay. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about So Sweet. That's the new single? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, so so sweet. Um, it's actually a song I wrote for Buddy's album um, back right after college, and you know he put song on his album, and you know it did what it did. And I always knew I was like, man, 
I'm gonna bring that song back, you know, because I really, really love that vibe and that, you know, the falsetto of it and the, the you can tell some of my influences in a song like that, you know, you, with the with the falsetto stuff, you can tell that I grew up on Elder Barge and and Earth, Wind, and Fire, and you know, uh, you know, people that sang up there. So, got a chance to redo it and redo it the right way. Um, and again, you know, the video is beautiful. Um, Shorty in the video is chocolate and amazing and royal. Um, and just a great, great actress. And she worked with me on several of my videos, um, Brittany, and, and she did a great job. And we just, we showed up, we clicked, and we, we made some great, great stuff together. So um, I'm, I'm excited. And then So Sweet is already moving up the charts. I had never had a song chart before under that veil. And so like that blew my mind and it's a dream come true. And So Sweet is doing the same thing. So I'm super excited to see where it goes. I'm glad it's being received the way that it is. And we're locking in like five or six city winery dates and some performances and stuff in Chicago, Philly, Pittsburgh, St. Louis, and Atlanta, and DC to start with, those six. So I'm, I'm really excited. And then something here in LA, I think the Taste of Soul. But I'm really excited to just be able to get out there and perform it for people live, you know, meet the people that have been rocking with me my whole career um and and all that so i'm i'm just this the natural high that i'm on is crazy well it is joyful to watch and i'm sure that as our audience uh becomes aware of this interview and sees where you're going to be performing i'm going to date myself right now you know you, you might get that tom jones effect when i'm not saying what his audience members did, but they threw items on the stage. And I know your audience is too classy for that. Okay, one question. Um, there was a, an item of controversy that hit the internet uh, a couple of months ago. And I will not name those names because this isn't like, you know, a question to truncate you further into controversy. But there was a lot of dialogue about what a woman maybe should or should not be expected to do or restricted from doing once she is someone's wife or mother or uh, um, in a deep and sin uh, serious ro romantic relationship. And mm -hmm. um, if you are a public figure, and once again, scrolling on Instagram, there was a, a, a very spirited discussion with the panel of women and you were on the platform, you were saying, well, no, wait a minute. At some, those are my cookies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. you like, wait a minute, those are my cookies. Now, I yeah. am, like I said, I'm a tween ager. I also have a young adult son. And I could just imagine for him being a young man and having now become a father with someone and really wanted to uh, protect, respect, and celebrate the freedom of the mother of yeah. the child, but also do yeah. some manner of protection um, with her, over her. So I found your response to be very sincere, very honorable, and this isn't designed to throw shade on anyone who believes differently. What I want to speak to is your value system as it relates to honoring, protecting, and respecting mm -hmm. women. Yeah, that's to me. It's important. It always has been. Um, I'm I'm the last person on earth that's gonna you know suggest a woman not wear this or don't wear that or whatever. I'm not doing that. But if we're dating, if we're in love, if I'm your man and you're my woman, then I think automatically I think there's a shift in the way that we carry ourselves a little bit. You know, I need to be respectful of my relationship. I'm in love and I'm. I'm in love and in lust with this amazing person over here. So I don't need to search for validation over here by doing too much. I don't need to participate in the gray sweatpants challenge. I got a woman at home, you know what I'm saying? Um, things like that. And I think it's the same with women. I think women move and dress accordingly to where they are. Happily involved, happily single, married, you know, um, 
all about right now and having fun. You know, whatever they do, and that's their prerogative, and I celebrate their freedoms because they don't need to ask us permission to do anything. But you move a little differently. I got a lot of friends that are married and happily married. Is it perfect? No. Is it wonderful to see though? Yes, because they work through the imperfect moments. They get through the, the struggles and the, and the dry seasons and they love each other and they move the way that a married couple should move. So, you know, that's kind of what that was. But we did have a great, great discussion on that. You know, I learned a lot um, just being a part of it. And that's one of the reasons I enjoy doing those kind of panels. Great. I'm just going to have a moment of silence right now for the Great Sweatpants Challenge. <laughs> so now, moving on. Uh, to my, thank you very much. Back to our program. Okay, now, Christian Keys, talk about what you're writing now, what you're writing, uh, what you have coming up as a writer. Uh, as a writer, which I did not expect to be. Um, clearly, God is a genius and a comedian. Um, I went to school for social work. And here I am, you know, a writer and an actor and, and being able to do these wonderful things. But as a writer, um, let me see. I can say that the first half of season three of All the Queen's Men, a show that I wrote and created, um, a show that's based on my first novel, Ladies' Night, um, that's out and um, streaming. But um, I can't, they haven't announced, uh, what's next for that show even though i know and even though i know that it's a positive thing and it's a great thing and when it's coming and how many episodes and this that and the other so i can't really speculate or speak on that without getting in trouble and we don't, don't want like me to get, get in trouble. trouble no no so um but they can expect more wonderful things from all the queen's men um i can i can safely say that uh, and i'm also working on probably three or four other TV shows and three or four other films. Um, I just, I like, I like writing. I was up late last night writing and, um, and I'm excited because it's an opportunity to create jobs. It's an opportunity to help people further themselves in their career choice. Um, but if you think about it, when we go to film All the Queen's Men, there's probably 150 or 200 new jobs created. That's 150 or 200 people able to pay their bills at home. So, you know, you start to realize that your blessings are also tied to other people's blessings and their purpose. And and that feels good too, you know, to create, help create that opportunity with the team, with the studio, with the network or whatever. And, you know, with Big Fella setting all of that up, it's, it does feel good to, to not only do a good job at your career and get a check for it, but also help create some jobs and create some opportunities. Fantastic. So before we wrap up our time today, uh, it, I just want to apologize to all the gentlemen in the audience. I've been so presumptuous, presumptuous and only spoken about uh, Mr. Keyes and his appeal to female fans and in that audience. But in all fairness, Christian, uh, what has feedback been from, you know, the males in your audience? How are you inspiring and empowering um, other male performers or those who identify as male? Uh, and what is the feedback with, with, with that segment of your audience? Um, it's always been pretty good. Like I, I, one, it's never been important to me to be seen as a sex symbol. Um, yes, I want to stay active. I want to be healthy. I want to be on earth for as long as God lets me be here. But um, that's never been a priority. So I don't carry myself like, you know, in that manner. Um, for me, I think it's received well and, you know, on the male side of the world because I just try to make honest work. I don't try to, you know, be a tough guy or pretty guy, or pretty boy, or whatever. Um, or, or none of that. I try to make sure my characters are honest. They're strong when they need to be strong. They're vulnerable when they need to be vulnerable. They're afraid when, if they if they if they're experiencing something that that gives them fear or anxiety. And if you make it real, just like with music, it'll connect with people. So you know, a lot of friends or people stop. Hey man, you on? Stop, love you on. Hey man, you on? Uh, 
you, you, what's your, what's your name? What's the name that show you on? For cats, dudes taught me all the time. Yeah. Um, so it's received well. I'm grateful for it. Uh, I just want to do stuff that makes, you know, especially even primarily us, you know, the black community. I want us proud of the work that I'm doing. Um, I'm blessed to be working because of guys, you know, some of the guys I named already, you know, Mr. Porter and Mr. Washington. Um, you know, even closer to my age, you know, every time Amari Harwick or uh, Last Lonzo or Don Cheadle or, you know, um, S S Michael Ely or Morris Chestnut does a great job. They're reminding studios and networks that it's important to have strong black leads and representation. The same way it's important to, to, to me when I'm writing, it needs to be important to them. And when they do a great job, which they always do, they're opening doors for us. So um, I, I'm definitely gonna hold it down, you know, for the fellas creatively and do my best job to open some more doors, you know, behind me for other people and create more opportunities. Okay, last question. Christian Keys, mm -hmm. what is your challenge or your word of inspiration to other artists who have not fully come into their own? We started this interview with conversations about this music that is new to the world. You made it mm -hmm. clear that music began in you at 12 years old. The world first experienced you as an actor. Now the world is experiencing all of your talents. So what is your challenge or inspiration to other artists who have yet to fully come into their own? I would say to please be brave enough to do it. I would say, you know, that trying that thing that you're passionate about and it being moderately successful feels way better than you not trying it at all and you regretting it for the rest of your life. So I would say, you know, have some audacity and go after that thing. I've learned over the years that, that unless I do the groundwork and build it, God can't bless it. And and I, I swear by that. I gotta we gotta plant it and give him something to water. So um us doing the, you know, taking the classes, taking the workshops, going to Barnes and Noble or Amazon Prime and getting all the books we can get our hands on so we could become more knowledgeable about that thing that we're passionate about. I think that's the groundwork, you know, building it, writing it out, build that brand. Um, start that fitness apparel company, you know, write that book, write that song, record that album, write that movie. Um, he can't bless it unless you build it, unless we build that thing. And he will, you know, it'll be in his time. We won't understand it. It'll be weird. You're going to be mad at him. I've been there. But at the same time, you know, he's smirking like, oh, I, 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 got, I got this situation. And then you look up and then you, there's almost not enough time for all the blessings that he sent you. So do the work, he'll, he'll do the rest. Chrissy Keys, under that veil, cause then to play naked. So sweet. <laughs> Coming to a city near you. So get your tickets now. Thank you so much. I'm Larita Shelby, also known as Jazzy Rita for EURweb.com, giving a grand bravo and thank you to you, Mr. Christian Keys. Thank you very much. And please let everybody know that the album will be out within the next two weeks. Um, get involved under that veil, Cook My Dinner Naked, and So Sweet. The songs are out and available everywhere that they buy or stream their music. So. Um, check it out. I promise you, you will not dis be disappointed.